Hi, my name is Lisa Love and I am conducting this video interview um, by request. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Crystal? Lisa Love. Yes. If you don't become a pinup model, what everyday occupation would you have liked? Well, um, being a pinup model is actually not my occupation. It's just a hobby that I have because I love the clothing. So it's not really something that I do for compensation. Um, I just do it for fun. So um, my occupation was I was uh, a career woman for a long time and I worked full time taking care of my son. I was a single mother for a long time until I met my husband. And now that I met my husband for the first time in my adult life, I'm able to stay home, which is so awesome. So um, I, for a living, I did um, what I loved and that was um, secretarial work and then um, just did some modeling on the side, but now I'm at home and I help my husband care for his elderly parents, which are my in-laws, so that's really rewarding. And then modeling, I just kind of do on the side. I don't, I don't take it too seriously and don't do it too much. I just kind of do it when, I, when I'm in the mood. <laughs> do you get nervous before every photo shoot? I don't get nervous for photo shoots. I do get nervous if I'm going to speak in front of people. Like, this is a perfect example of something that would make me nervous, because videos and stuff, I'm, I'm pretty nervous, so I'm pretty nervous right now. <laughs> but um, photo shoots, piece of cake, because it's, it's just between me and the photographer usually, and I just have a good time, and I can be goofy, and I can be myself without um, kind of feeling like people are watching me, which, you know, things like this. People are watching me, and like I'm wondering, does my hair look okay? You know, is my nose flaring up when I say certain words <laughs> or things like that? I just, I just, I don't know. I get nervous. I'm nervous right now. Well, you're doing great. Thank you. Who would you like to collaborate with? Um. Well, I would. If it wasn't so intimidating, I would love to model with Bernie Dexter. I've always loved her very, very much. So um, I would love to be in, in the same film as Bernie Dexter. But um, I think I'm, I'm a little too nervous and it would probably just be a train wreck. Um, or Mosh. I've been following Mosh lately and I'm obsessed with her, so she's pretty amazing. But again, it would be one of those things where I, I'd probably be too nervous. But those are probably <laughs> the two people that I love. Okay. And uh, what, what advice would you give to people wanting to get into the scene? Um, well, um, that's kind of always been the same for me. I've always, um, I've always suggested that if people, if women do want to get into pinup modeling to kind of understand why you want to do it. Um, for me, for example, um, I never really did it for, uh, the fans or, you know, for people to know who I am or for magazine covers or you know it was, it was never like that for me and I think that actually contributed to my success too because everything was kind of organic you know I never really pushed um, um, the name that I've created and I did it purely for the love of what I was doing you know for the modeling and so I would just advise that you know do what you love and you know, a lot of times when you do what you love, you do it with passion. And when you do things with passion, then they turn out really good usually. So um, I would just say follow your heart and do what you love. And um, just make sure you're doing things for the right reasons. And it should be good. <laughs> yeah. Don't, oh, wait, one more thing. Uh -oh. uh, don't anticipate getting rich from pinup modeling because it just does not happen. <laughs> I spend way more money than I would ever make. Um, I buy all, I invest in all my clothing, my vintage clothing, um, accessories, I'm constantly shopping and stuff, so I, I spend a very great deal um, of money, and um, I really don't make any, so I would say don't expect to get rich, <laughs> or make any. Uh, who are your favorite pinup models? Uh, like I mentioned, Bernie Dexter, I've loved from the very beginning. Um, I also love Dana Deluxe, I think she's a gorgeous redhead. Um, I love Mosh, beautiful blonde. Um, I think that covers it, right? I have a brunette, a blonde, and a redhead <laughs> that I love. So Mosh, Bernie Dexter, and Dana Deluxe. 
Okay, good. Yeah. And uh, if I can ask, how did how did it feel when you uh, win pinup contests or magazine cutter covers or mm -hmm. those sort of things? Well, um, for a while there in the beginning, when I first started modeling, I did do pinup contests, and that is something that I really, really miss doing. I wish I could still do it. You know, um, uh, the only reason I don't is because I. I I know that a lot of aspiring um, models, they do that to kind of get rank, name recognition and all that stuff, and I just feel like it would be unfair since I have been in the scene for a while. Um, but anyway, when I was uh, doing pinup contests, I absolutely loved it. And I know I said I get nervous in front of people, and I do, but there was something about that, you know, getting on stage, I just kind of was in my element and kind of did my thing. And um, my very first pinup contest was Ink and Iron, and I believe it was... Was it 2007 or 2008? Somewhere around there. And um, it was a wonderful experience. Micheline Pitt was hosting it with Pinot Girl Clothing. And um, it was a great first experience because they had 12 girls on stage and they just dwindled down and dwindled down as they kind of eliminated people. And I was still standing there and I couldn't believe it. And, you know, I'm still standing there and they're doing like five and I'm still there and then they're doing three and I'm still there and it was so exciting. And then they did... Um, uh, the top two and I was still there which was so surprising because I I wasn't known and and I was here amongst all these tattooed um, and half-drunk men that were rooting and cheering for someone who was conservative and kind of cutesy pinup type of thing and and it was um, it felt really good for people to appreciate um, my my look and so um, I didn't win. I actually got runner-up, which I was still very, very, very proud of. And then every contest after that, which I believe there were probably maybe five or six, I can't remember, but um, I won every single one. So after that first contest, I, I won first place every single one, and it just felt so good. And I loved those days. I wish I could have them back, but I have a lot of good videos. So. And then um, for magazine covers and things like that, like I said, it's not something that I necessarily go after or anything. And so when someone does ask me um, to grace the cover of their publication, of course, it's an honor and I get excited and I want to do my best and I want to do my research on what I need to wear and what the styling is going to be like and stuff. So it's, it's exciting. I love it. Okay. Uh, what did you want to be when you were younger? Well, um... The first thing that comes to mind is something pretty funny. My dad, uh, when I was younger, I don't know how old I was, but um, I was not old enough to know what a go-go dancer was. And my dad, don't laugh, she's laughing up there. But anyway, um, my dad thought it was really cute when his friends were around to say, Miha, Miha, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say, a go-go dancer. And uh, everybody would laugh, and everybody thought it was really funny. I doubt if my mom thought it was funny, but um, I always said I wanted to be a go-go dancer, which um, it's not the case, but um, <laughs> I also um, grew up very, very girly. I grew up playing with paper all the time. I was always filing and stapling and taping things, and when my mom would pay the bills, she put the, like, the um, electric bill stubs or whatever in the trash can, and I would go to the trash can, and I would take them out so I could have my paperwork and I would file them and all of that stuff. It's kind of crazy. But um, so I think um, when I was younger, I always wanted to be either a secretary or um, a teacher or someone who works in an office, which, you know, turned out to be the case. So I got my fix, <laughs> plenty of my fix of paper. So that's cool. Do fans ever get annoying? Never. Absolutely, absolutely never, ever, ever. Um, it's, it's such a great feeling for me to meet uh, people who admire my work, and I think, I think it um, it means a lot to them to meet me. But I don't know that if my fans really understand what it's like for me to meet them. You know, it's it's not just a one way street. I love to meet them. I love to talk to them. I love to help them realize that. Um, that were the same, you know, and, and, you know, people happen to know my name and that's fantastic, but we're all the same, you know, and, and I just love talking to people and getting to know them and, 
and it's great. They never ever get annoying because they're fans and there's so much love there. You know, I can't. How could I possibly be annoyed? You know, so nope, never. Okay, good. Uh, who inspires you? Uh, well, uh, when I was growing up, um, my grandmother Angela was a seamstress, and so I got a lot of my creativity from her. And then um, my other grandmother, my nani, was very sophisticated. She always had her jewelry. She always had her earrings on, her necklace, and, and everything. So that was pretty inspirational. And then um, my mom was also very classy, very sophisticated, you know, always dressed really nice. She was always, you know, real petite and stuff. And so, um, you know, I really looked up to her, and, and I can I, I see um, uh her, you know, within me, and um, um, yeah, so I would say my grandparents, both my grandparents and my mom were a huge influence on me. Okay, and mm -hmm. I have to ask, uh, yes. what shampoo do you use? Oh my goodness, well, do you remember, gee, your hair smells terrific, do you guys remember that? I'm probably dating myself, but anyway, I don't use that, but um, <laughs> I use uh, a... Uh, olive oil shampoo and conditioner. It's green. It's like avocado green. Uh, do, do you remember seeing it in my shower? And um, um, it's sold by Design Line. Do you have it? Oh my God, I'm just bringing it out. I didn't expect this. <laughs> but anyways, by Design Line and Hair Masters and Fantastic Sam's um, used to carry it. And it, it looks like this. <laughs> it's just like this. And this is, so it's olive oil shampoo for all hair types, um, Regis design line. And then let me see the conditioner, because that's what kind of reminds me of like avocado type thing. And then this is the, um, this is the conditioner. See how it's like green, green? Just be careful if you do use this, because um, my tub gets very, very slippery um, from this, because it's just such a good conditioner. But um, this is what I use, and I love it. <laughs> they come in these big bottles. They don't come in these little ones, but they come in these really big bottles. And uh, it's great, great shampoo. Okay. Yes. And I've seen your closet before. Uh, what's your favorite brand of or type of clothing? Um, I love 40s and 50s Mexican clothing. Um, anything with ruffles, um, anything with sequins, anything that's hand-painted. I just, um, I gravitate towards that. It, I, it feels so right when I'm dressed um, uh, in my Mexican clothing attire. I just love it. And some of my favorite bands are, brands, excuse me, are uh, Maya de Mexico, um, Mocambo. I mean, there's so many, so many um, vintage designers that I, I absolutely adore. Um, this outfit here that I'm wearing is one of my favorites, but... Um, it didn't have a it didn't have a label. I don't think it's 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 from Mexico. I don't think it was made in Mexico, but I think it's absolutely adorable. So anything with um, with ruffles too, I love. Um, as far as reproduction uh, vintage or vintage inspired clothing, um, I love pinup girl clothing. I love um, vintage suits by Mary. Um, you know, a lot of them. I think they're all doing you know, such a great job. Um, under this skirt, as a matter of fact, I have a pinup girl clothing. Um, type of petticoat. It's not really a petticoat. I wish I could show you, but that wouldn't uh, require me to lift up my skirt. But um, it's this like canvas type um, petticoat, and it only goes about up to maybe a couple inches above my knee, and it's the best petticoat by Pinnacle Clothing. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's perfect for circle skirts and for Mexican skirts. But anyway, yeah, so those are my favorites. Okay, mm -hmm. and you mentioned your grandmother and you've mentioned your father. Uh, when and where did you grow up? Um, I was born in 1972. I know you guys are doing the math. And I was born in El Paso, Texas. So I am Texas born. And um, I was really back and forth between El Paso and Los Angeles for most of my life. Um, put it this way in elementary school, junior high school, and high school. I went to school in both El Paso and in Los Angeles, believe it or not. So elementary school, 
in El Paso, I went to Fannin, and then in Los Angeles, I went to Doris Place in Atwater Elementary School, and then junior high school, I went to Irving in LA, and then I went to Parkland Middle School in El Paso, and then high school, I went to Marshall for a few months, Marshall High School in Los Angeles, and then went back to El Paso and um, graduated from Andrus High School. So. I was back and forth between those two places. My dad lives in El Paso, and my mom lives in Los Angeles, so I was kind of back and forth. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, then how do you answer? Who did you live with? Who raised you? And how many yeah. people did you have? <laughs> yeah, I lived, with the, I lived with both of them. I was raised by both of them, just in different states. Um, and as far as siblings, I have two older sisters. And um, so for a really long time, it was just the three of us, and I was the baby of us three girls. And then um, when I was 18, both of my parents um, got remarried, one in El Paso, one in Los Angeles, and they both are crazy and decided to have another child. So I have two older sisters, and there's me, and then I have a uh, 18 year difference that we're 18 years apart my little sister Janae who's 20 something now but and then I have a little a little brother also who's my son's age so it's just crazy so I have what does that make it I have three sisters and one brother <laughs> yeah okay uh, favorite TV shows uh, movies music uh, music I love the wise guys I love Pachuco Jose I love um, Vicky Tafoya. I love uh, Nikki Hill, um, Santos de los Angeles, Ozo Motley. Um, it's all over the place, all mm -hmm. over the place. And then uh, movies. <laughs> I love Dumb and Dumber. I love Elf. I love all those <laughs> funny comedies. <laughs> I also love Grease. I love uh, The Notebook. I love um, what is that one that I've been watching a lot lately that I love so much? It's with Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, just just go, go with it. it. Oh my God, so funny, so good. I can watch it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So I love those type of movies. And then, as far as TV shows, um, I like The um, King of Queens. And. Uh, I've been really liking Mario Lopez's new show, the one-on-one, -on -one, um, many interviews. Um, it's a talk show? Yeah, yeah. It's just a one-on-one -on -one talk show. It's really good. Um, what else do I like on TV? I love watching Dodger baseball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's about it. Yeah. I love Oprah. Sorry. I love Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. <Are> Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning to ever write a book about your life? No, no, <laughs> no. I I plan on just, you know, when I'm gone one day, um, I plan for people just to look through my images, and I think that'll tell a lot about my life. Um, I do not plan on writing a book. Um, my husband, on the other hand, I think he should write a book. He's far more interesting. <laughs> so, we'll see. How much do you like to show of your private life to your fans? Uh, I'm pretty much an open book. I think I'm pretty, um, I'm not very private. You know, I kind of um, put my personal life out there a lot. I'm very proud of my son. I'm very proud of my husband. Excuse me, my husband. Um, so, uh, I don't hide that. I'm pretty much an open book. Okay. And how does your relationship and your career mix? Oh, great. Great. My, um, I met my husband in the scene, so it worked out really good. He's a... Um, a very talented Chicano Pachuco artist, and um, and he, you know, respects my modeling and encourages my modeling, and he uses a lot of my material for his own art. So it works really, 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 really good. We both love cars and we love music, and so it works real good. Okay, good. I was yeah. going to ask you if you were dating or if you were single, but you, I'm married. You, you may you answer that. I'm married. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. Do you have children? Yes. Well, you do. I do. I do. I have a son. He's, um, he'll be 23 years old this year and next month, huh? No, wait, November? November 1st? Yeah. So his birthday's coming up. He'll be 23. And um, he's wonderful. He, he's a, a good kid. Well, he's a man now, but he's a, he's a good kid. <laughs> and um, he actually works for Hollywood Hot Rods. He is a metal fabricator, so he... Um, 
works on vintage cars as a career, and I'm just so proud of him. He graduated from um, the Hot Rod Institute in South Dakota and came back home after he got his um, diploma there and got a job right away. He's been working for Hollywood Hot Rods ever since. And Hollywood Hot Rods is a great place for him to be. You know, it's a, it's a, a well-known, prestigious uh, um, shop. You know, it's not just a, a corner shop. It's it's pretty well known and a lot of um, publicity and things like that. As a matter of fact, I, he's coming out in a magazine, which is really exciting, really soon. So um, yeah, I'm I'm very proud of him. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, yes. how is it to know that younger girls and women look up to you? Uh, it's flattering, and I hope I continue. Um, to do those women and those girls proud, you know, I um, I have seen um, pinup contests evolve and turn into something that is more classy now um, and than when I first started. And um, my husband has convinced me that. Um, that I had something to do with that, you know, in, in winning all, uh, the contests that I did and kind of um, being an example. And, and so I'm really proud of that. Um, uh, it's an honor that young girls, you know, look up to me. And, and like I said, I just, I want them to, um, to be proud of themselves. I want them to know that class prevails. Um, you know, it's something to be really proud of. You don't have to show everything, you know, in order to be known or to get magazine covers or to do all that. I, I think there's a place for that, and I appreciate that, too, you know, when I see other um, models and stuff um, dressing in awesome two-piece bathing suits and lingerie and stuff. I mean, I, I'm a fan of theirs. Um, however, um, I feel like I am displaying a different image. Um, and so it's flattering, and I, I hope to continue, and I hope to even help the um, aspiring models that are coming into the scene, either by promoting what they're doing or um, supporting the work or answering questions that they may have and stuff. I, I kind of see that I am um, um, will probably stop modeling sooner than later. You know, I, um, I kind of want to leave while I'm still pretty popular, you know. Uh, I want to leave before I get too much older and um, not leave, but I just kind of want to evolve into something else, which I would imagine would be um, promoting and maybe styling other girls and stuff and kind of helping the new generation um, be seen. So um, what was the question? <laughs> How is it to know younger girls yeah. and women look yeah. up to okay, you? Yeah, okay, yeah, so I was still on track. I was still, I was still on track, yeah. So um, it's wonderful, and I plan to still be a part of their lives and their journey, too. So you'll still you know, be involved? Absolutely, absolutely. Even after I stop modeling, I, I plan to still definitely be involved in some way or another. Like I said, whether it be um, maybe... Um, designing suits or you know kind of helping them put their ensembles together and things like that so yeah the plan on staying sticking around it's great mm -hmm. it's great very so nice. is that it that's it well thank you well thank you miss lisa love thank you thank you very much um if anybody's interested in seeing more of my work you can visit my website at www.lisalove.com and from there you can get a link to my instagram twitter pinterest etsy um, all that good stuff. So I hope to see you guys around. And also my husband's website, i got to plug that too, um, is fleetlinefineart.com. So check out his work. It's pretty amazing. So we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.